Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. Europe's Global Monitoring for Environment and Security program came into focus last week at the GMES in Action Conference in Copenhagen, Denmark. The conference gave participants an opportunity to explore the economic, environmental, and social benefits of the GMES program. Through GMES, decision makers will have access to reliable, timely, and accurate information services to manage the environment, understand and mitigate the effects of climate change, and ensure civil security. At the conference in Copenhagen, I got the chance to speak with the director of ESA's Earth Observation Programs and the director general of UMITSAT. Let's take a look back to see what they had to say. I'm joining you today from Copenhagen in Denmark, where we are holding the GMES in Action Conference. And I have this pleasure of speaking with Volker Liebig, who is the director of ESA's Earth Observation Program, and with Elan Rattier, who is the director general of UMITSAT. Now, of course, Volker, I'd like to begin with you. Can you tell me a bit about GMES? What is it, and what are the objectives of this conference? Well, GMES, uh, or with GMES, we try to achieve what we uh, achieved 30 years ago for weather forecast, which is to have an operational system to monitor our environment and to have a tool also for civil security applications. Uh, of course, this is driven first of all by the climate change issue, where Europe is politically leading, but it is also uh, monitoring uh, direct pollutions or delivering data after disasters or giving inputs to health, uh, agriculture or the green economy which is building up now. Now Alain, of course GMES relies heavily on satellite information. Can you tell me a bit about the role that UMITSAT plays in GMES? Thank you. Yes, uh, as you know our convention has been extended from meteorology to other areas like climate change monitoring, but we also do uh, oceanography and uh, monitoring of atmospheric composition. This is why at this stage of GMES we deliver data from our own mission as one input to the core services. And in the future uh, we will fly GMES instruments on the satellites, on our satellites that are developed by ESA and will also operate some Ocean Sentinels missions uh, delivering data to uh, GMS services. And we are also looking at the requirements for the big future after this current generation of Sentinels from a user perspective. Now back to you, Volker. Can you give us a recent example of where data have been provided within the GMS uh, context, which has had a direct impact on our daily lives or on the daily lives of a certain group of people? Yes, I already mentioned before, one of the applications of GMES is the uh, emergency response service. And unfortunately, we had last week uh, the earthquake in Modena in Italy, and uh, we could deliver data based on high-resolution optical satellites to make a damage assessment. Unfortunately, we could not deliver what we usually also do after earthquakes, which is uh, so-called interferograms from radar uh, data because we lost our Envisat satellite some weeks ago, uh, which show you the ground movement in the centimeter range and uh, uh, the most striking maps of this type we delivered after the Fukushima earthquake, which showed that Japan had moved four meters. So unfortunately, this data are not uh, available now for Italy. And Alain, can you give us an example of the information services that UMITSAT can provide within the GMES, GMES context or, or elsewhere? In fact, we do not deliver information services, the MET services, the metallurgical services, the MyOcean and the MAC project deliver services. So we deliver input data to those models which are used to deliver warnings and also predict air quality. So there are recent examples, you know, in, during the summer 2010, there were big fires in Russia with concerns that pollution hits European countries and we use data from our satellites to look at CO emissions and also MAC used uh, data from uh, infrared imagery to assess the radiative power of fire and then to predict, to tra trans transform this into emission and to predict the propagation of, uh, of aerosols and it was demonstrated that only the southern part of Finland could be affected. That's one example, there are many more. Well, Alana Volker, thank you so much for your time and we look forward to the future of GMES. 
And that brings us to the end of this special edition of Earth from Space. But remember, to find out more about space and about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int. From the ESA Web TV Studios, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels.